He was. Thank you. Um, that uh, that whatever you may think of Zhang Jinyue, he was one of the great brilliant doctors, one of the ones who were born knowing, uh, which means the Stephen Hawking's of Chinese medicine through the ages. And you could say there's a good who left writings, a good 10 is the official answer in Chinese medicine, um, that in the mainland, a compliment is to describe an old doctor as number 11, which is saying that he's the next great brilliant one after the 10 through the entire list of history. Just a little thing. Uh, and what that really means is the ancients, when they wrote about herbs, when they wrote their formulas, they were going from flavor nature. And that's what guided everything. So crash course on where to learn more about chi and flavor, free articles that Julianne did a beautiful job. Uh, they're published in the Journal of Chinese Medicine. They're free on our site. Returning our focus to flavor nature, it sets the whole idea of what the whole writing of herbs was all about. The first Materia Medica, the yin and yang of herbs. They're available for free. This is not today's talk is to tell you about all of that. Go to our online teaching platform. So you go to traditionalstudies.org. You hit online learning. It takes you to a page. You go to the bottom, show all the products. You then hit free. Like you go search for free and they're free. Read them, please. Uh, once you understand how they were looking at it all, you will go, oh. And uh, I'm a big believer that if you don't have a good dent in your forehead, you really aren't going to get very far in this medicine. And that dent, it comes from, oh, I can't believe that. Uh, and we want to be really proud of that bruise, the indentation. Um, I think it's important because not only does it mean that we're waking up to things and Buddha's sword is at work, uh, but it keeps us humble because we keep realizing how confused we just were. <laughs> at least it helps me. So what is the way? Chi and flavor for what we call nature and flavor. And the chi, which is much better than its nature. It's like, what's the chi of this plant, right? What's the chi of this herb? It's hot toxic. That toxic means it's going to go in there and something's going to happen. It's going to be a cathartic something. Your body's going to be like, ooh, ooh, or ah, or whatever's going to happen. It's going to stimulate and be hot warming, moving, all the yang aspects of hot, right? Or just hot without the toxicity or warm, less intense or neutral or cool or cold or cold toxic venoms. Many venoms out there are cold toxic venoms. Uh, if you see enough videos on our YouTube channel of snippets, you'll hear the story of me poisoning myself with toad venom um, by double doubling the double and literally like having cathartic shakes in bed and Julianne being like, uh, you're about to die, what do I do? So uh, cold venom, I know about that one. In terms of the flavors, it's important to know that these sentences in Chinese are right out of the Neijing, okay? Xing neng sa, neng xing, right? Acrid can disperse, it can move. Sweet can build or slow or harmonize. Bitter can drain, dry, make firm. Sour can gather, can astringe. Salty can lower, can soften. Bland can leach or benefit or create flow, right? That the herb has a yang aspect or a yin aspect, and then it has a flavor and it's going to change our chi as a person. And that's what makes it move the chi to the head so that the headache goes away or the sinus is clear or we break a sweat. The herbs don't do that. They don't break a sweat. They have a flavor which causes our body as humans to go meat or, or whatever is going to happen, right? And then the action happens. But if we feed that same herb to a cow, it's not going to do that, right? It's critical to understand that herbs don't do that action. They have a flavor and a nature or a chi that sparks us one way or another, calming us, nourishing us, draining us, drying us, wetting us, whatever it may be. And that's affecting our chi. And that's how the ancients saw everything. So with that in mind, let's treat an external wind invasion. Taiyang zhui, you know, taiyang zhui bing. So we've got our taiyang illness, the mai fu, the pulse is floating. We've got our toxiang jiang tong. We've got our 
head and nape is tight and sore, et cetera, everything we all learned in school, right? And in here, I'm gonna need a warm and acrid because they're cold, they don't like wind. So I need something to go in there and warm up the system, but it's gotta move, it's gotta be light, it's gotta be acrid, which is gonna go everywhere. But at the same time, they're sick, right? They got a little bit of sweat, they feel uncomfortable, whatever may be happening, I need something to cool and sour, a yin, but not a yin heavy herb, a yin light herb to hold that surface. Then I need to really, I got to warm that. It's heavy. I don't want that warmth to move. So this formula that we're looking at here, it's got a warm light moving and it's got a warm holding in the middle. That's pretty nice, right? And then we've got some warm, neutral, warm, neutral, but they're sweet. So we can see, okay, we're nourishing, we're slowing things down, we're helping. So we've got warm acrid, cool sour, and then the warm, 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 sweet, 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 okay? That's going to make this person feel better by warming the outside, but holding the edges in, warming the middle, getting rid of nausea, discomfort, and then giving them some nourishment or some strength or some settling, okay? Which is what we're looking at here. It's Guajiratong, all right? Guajiratong is not Guajir, Xiaoyao, Shengjiang, Dazao, Jirgansao. It's not, it's warm acrid, it's cool sour, it's warm acrid, it's warm neutral sweet, it's warm sweet. So if I don't have guajer or the guajer that comes in is strange, I don't, I can't say oh, I can't treat your wind invasion, so sorry, right? All I need is warm acrid. If you think about a jade windscreen, you ping pong sand, where do they go? They use baiju, warm acrid, right? Warm acrid bitter, huang chi, right? So it's, Guajir baiju, as opposed to, I'm sorry, it's a uh, Huangqi baiju, as opposed to Guajir Xiaoyao, all right? They just flipped it, but it's the same formula. It's Guajir Tang without Guajir. It's, it's working by flavor and nature and what to see. And why that's important is that if we're gonna learn to customize formulas, if we're going to learn to write herbs when the supply chain has led us astray, which has been a problem in the last few years because of COVID and is going to be a bigger and bigger problem as the mainland wants to hold on to their herbs for their own market. So with that, if I don't know how to create, find other warm acrid herbs to substitute for guajir, I'm in trouble, right? I have to be able to understand that I don't care about guajir shaoya. I don't at all. I care about causing the chi of my patient to move in certain ways while protecting their chi in certain ways. What are my herb choices? So the problem when we study Guajiratong is it's missing that central, all important piece, which is the patient. Can we see the human that they were treating from the equation? So when we look at a formula out of the Shanghan Lun or anything, Instead of seeing, oh, that treats headaches, stiff necks, stop and say, can I visualize the person? Who is this person? Old, young, overweight, underweight, heavy drinker, not a drinker, how sick? Who is the person that they wrote this particular flavor nature for that was so successful that they used it on lots of people and it made a book? We have to see the person. So if we can see who the particular human is and recognize where that glacier tongue is going, then we can figure out how to change our invasion, our patient's invasion if they don't match. And that is the most important thing is that not every patient is going to match every single symptom. And therefore we need to be able to do this. So here, are very common guajir tong variations I use for treating an external invasion. So instead of our first one, instead of guajir shaoyao, I'll use jirza. So shaoyao being sour uh, is gonna restrain, but this person has a temper. This person's a little frustrated. This person's ticked off at being sick and they're on the couch and they got the cup in their hands. And then you ask them something and they're grouchy, okay? Grouchy does not need a sour restraining herb, right? Don't restrain grouchy. <laughs> you get fomenting 
mean. I've made that mistake. So instead of Xiao Yao, I use Drizza. It's cool. Or it's cold, cool. So it's going to balance out that Guajir. They're both accurate. So there's going to be venting. And then I keep that Shengjiang, that Dazao, and that Zhigansao because they're cold in the middle and they need some nourishment. Our second variation, well, here's our person and they don't have much heat at all. You know, Taiyang invasion, it's supposed to be they're cold, they're afraid of wind, but then they want to unbutton their shirt. And then the moment they do, they don't feel good. So they cover back up. Uh, and that's who that is. This person doesn't have that, but they sweat at night. So they get night sweats. During the day, they feel a lot better. Come the afternoon, mid-afternoon, they're like, oh, I beat it. Then come the evening, they're like, oh, I'm still a little sick. And then that night, they have night sweats. They wake up sick. They go stand in the shower. They go there. By the time they get to work, they're functioning. By the day, they're like, I got this beat. And then the afternoon, fine. And then the whole pattern starts all over again. Except every night sweat they have, the next day, they just get a little sicker. And they start moving to needing jirza because they're getting grouchy. Right? So instead of Xiaoyao, I give them Jirmu or Yidru, all right? I'm going to nourish up the yin. I'm going to soften that. I'm going to calm and cool in a non-restraining way, but I'm going to take out that deep heat that only shows up in those yin hours. So it's greater Jirmu as opposed to greater Xiaoyao or greater Jirza. Now, number three and number four are my two favorites because the number three Guajir Dangwe, Ganjia, right? There's not even a nod to a cool herb in here. This is the person who gets sick and it's a Taiyang invasion of everything except the heat. They don't have any heat. They don't have any sweating. They're just sick, right? And they're functional. They don't have a fever, but they're sick. And giving them anything that's in the cold realm is just going to slow it down. And why would I do that? This particular one, if you're making notes, is a really good one. I can tell you it works so well. That's me, right? I travel so much that if I get sick, I don't have heat. I'm just tired and I'm sick and I'm cold and I can sit there with my down coat on and I'm not hot and I'm not like chilled or, or there, but I'm just like, okay, I'm just sitting there. And the number of times I've sat in hotel rooms and I've just got like a hat on my head and my coat, and it's like four in the morning and I've got jet lag and I'm like, okay, teachings in five hours, All right? This is my formula. Well, what if I, I do have a little sweating, but the sweating, it's not heat sweating, it's weak sweating, okay? I don't need to restrain it with a cool herb. I don't have any vexing. Fang Fang, it's great. We like to tell people that Fang Fang is like the putty in the windows to get rid of the drafts. So Fang Feng is kind of like, I think of it as like, if you have a bicycle pump and you seal the surface of the human, you can pump their Wei Qi back up. Boop, 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 it goes dink, and then it's solid again, right? And if it deflates, then there's holes going in and then there's they stay sick. So for me, uh, Guajir Dangwei or Guajir Fang Feng, and then forget the Shengjiang. One, it's a pain in the butt to have. You know, Ganjiang is right there. Uh, we have a pharmacy, right? Uh, and then two, it's just, super warm. And that's what I need. So I'll use those, but you can recognize those people. They have body aches. Oh, that's Taiyang. Xiaoyao. No, they're cold all the time. Give them Dangwe. Give them Fang Fang, right? And give them Ganjiang to really warm the system. So those warm herbs move through that cold because cold slows things down. So if I don't have a good thing to push the cold through, but I don't need to exhaust him with Ma Huang. I don't need to hit him with Fu Zhe, right? I just need to get the herbs moving in the system. And do I need them more in the blood? Dangwe, right? Or do I need them more on the surface? Fang Fang, okay? Those two happen to be me in a nutshell. What about the one, two, three, four, fifth formula? What about Guajir Shugan? Well, who is this person? Well, let's see. Shugan, okay, throat, there, oh, this is the person that when they start to get sick, the first place it goes is their throat. They get a tickle, they get a sore throat, and then they get sick. And they have the heat, but they, they're cold. They have all the Taiyang invasions, but their throat is what's bothering them over a stuffy nose. Sugar, okay? Beautiful combination. And you said, but they don't go together. Well, warm acrid, cold, bitter, light. 
It's going to be up here. It's a great combination. And then you can use Shengjiang Dazao Zhe Ganso. And then the last one you'll see, Guizhi Banxia. Well, what's that one? Well, they're sick and they're getting phlegm in the chest. They can cough something up. It's not a sore throat, Shugan. It's in the chest. And if we don't get it, it's going to get worse. So Guizhi Banxia, Shengjiang Dazao Zhe Ganso. So very quickly, we want to see the humans when we have a formula. And then if the human isn't exactly that, we shouldn't be using exactly that formula, right? It's really important that inari, right? So according to the person is how we want to practice. Everybody's different. So once we understand that, we really want to realize how the ancients wrote the formulas and what we as modern people, modern being from the Tang Dynasty onwards, right? Hence that chat insulting thing of the old days of like, yeah. Um, if you've never had fun with that and you're unaware of how uh, abusive they all are to each other, um, the source and flow of um, Chinese medicine history is on our teaching platform, Chen Xiuyan. I think somebody's done a book in English. I haven't looked at it, but uh, I do a great video where I go through line by line and everything else. And he is just abusive to all of these famous people all through time. And then he'll tell you why, all right? My favorite is, ah, that guy, he uses herbs the way the famous general uses soldiers. The more, the better, <laughs> right? I mean, it's just, they're, they're having a good time or not, right? So when we understand that, we realize that from now on, grab a formula out of the Shanghai Lun and then write down the names of the herbs, but then write their flavor nature, right? and then cover the herb names and look at it by a flavor nature. And then as you look at each of those herbs, think about potency and intensity of their chi and their flavor. This is what the ancients called, the Neijing called their yin or yang, their heavy or light. So that's what they were describing, right? When I step on the gas pedal, how's this herb gonna go? Is it zero to 60 in 3.4 seconds or is it 13 seconds, right? Uh, you know, I remember the old Priuses, like from the starting line, it was like, no, you're not going anywhere. I thought I was so clever and I got a, rented a Prius in San Francisco and I, I couldn't even get on the freeway. The cars are going by and you're like, right? It's like, never mind. So think about that. Then one and two. Flavor, nature, intensity. Then number three, we got to see the upright chi. Is it excess or deficient in the patient, right? Who are we treating? Are we treating that 50-year-old overweight male who's balding and sweats when he eats food or goes up a flight of stairs? Or are we treating the super thin person? Or are we treating a 78-year-old or a 17-year-old? Are we treating, who are we treating? What is their chi? And let's say their chi is strong. Is it strong today? As I always say, it doesn't matter how strong their chi is constitutionally if their baby is teething and they haven't slept in four nights. All right, you got to know that and look at that person on top of that. And then we have to grasp the type and intensity of the pathogenic chi, right? Is the illness making them wet and they've got a ton of phlegm? Or is the illness making them dry and they've got a dry, raspy cough and bloody nose, right? Is it very cold and they're shivering or are they sweating or is it none of the above? We want to grasp that pathogen. And then what I personally suggest is ask yourself, that pathogen, is it built up to the point that it's making the person sick because the person was so weak that it just grew it's like the tai, the tai Chi symbol, which is not behind me today. Uh, but if you look at the Tai Chi symbol that's here now, right? Like as that upright chi wanes, the yin or the pathogenic can grow because there's no such thing as a vacuum. So the weaker they get, the more damp there is, but the damp is following a weakness. Or is that pathogen really big, right? Do they have some nasty bacteria and the damp heat is overtaking them? and they've got dysentery. That's a very active pathogen. I need to treat that very differently. 
And how I work on their upright chi while treating that is going to be very different. We want to see the patient from the formula, not the symptom list, pattern, or disease. And that's really important. Write down the herbs, then write down their flavor and nature, cover the herbs, and then describe the person, and then think of 10 people who might be a physically different body or a different time period, and then switch out some of those herbs. See the patient to know the action of an herb. My favorite is Huang Chi. Uh, Huang Chi, I have a weird relationship with. Uh, I might for probably 20 years, if I wrote more than a pound of Huang Chi in an entire year, that would be a miracle. I just look at that herb and Campbell uh, Chi. I totally, dis I'm dismissive of Huang Chi. And you go to the pharmacies, it doesn't have one of those drawers. Huang Chi has its own massive drawer in the pharmacies because of how much it's a common herb to be used, right? So there, everyone's Huang Chi, Huang Chi, Huang Chi, and Andrew's like, yeah, I don't use Huang Chi. Huang Chi is a terrible herb, right? Uh, and you know, my favorite is we have a rule in our house with Huang Chi that Julianne, uh, she's not allowed to take Huang Chi for more than three days. Okay, day one, whoo! day two, the house is really clean, <laughs> right? Day three, we're hiding. We're like, ah. So it's like the joke in our house is, you know, you can't, can't pass three days of Huang Chi. Uh, and the reason why I don't like Huang Chi is because it's such a cash crop herb that it's sped grown. So it's very irritating and you get a whole lot of without the depth that it's supposed to have. It's a nourishing root. Uh, don't think of ginseng as a nourishing thing. Think of ginseng as it's a root that nourishes, all right? So once you realize that, you say, my patient needs a root that nourishes because it's a deeper food. It takes more from the earth. Okay, so if I don't need rensha and I need a nourishing herb, what are my nourishing roots? Oh, Huangqi, Dangshan, Renshan, Yuanzhi, Xishaishan, Beishashan, Nanshashan, Huangqi, Gansao. All of a sudden, my perspective changes. And anytime a formula has Renshan, I stop and I say, wait, are they using this to nourish? Nourish what? Nourish fluids, nourish strength, nourish energy. Well, what roots do I want for this? And then I'm not fettered by this word, Renshin, all right? So any case, Huang Qi is very irritating these days. The quality has actually gotten much better. Um, and it's supposed to restrain sweat. But if I can see the patient, if I can know who that patient is, then I know that it restrains patient the strained sweat in the patient who's been sick for a long time, who's infirm, who every time they get a bit of strength and you give them a little bit of hot soup, they break a sweat and then they're really sick and they feel worse afterwards. That Huang Qi is going to go in there and it's going to strengthen their Qi and their energy that that Wei Qi goes whoop, a little bit like that inflato. It inflates up and the pores close. Okay. That's how it restrains sweat. It doesn't restrain sweat. There's nothing sour about Huang Qi. It only restrains people who are leaking it from exhaustion, deficiency, and cold. But if I think it restrains sweat, and I have a patient who comes to me who's got sweaty hands, and they're tired, and they're overworking, and I miss that they're overweight, and that they showed up in a t-shirt and a down jacket, but they take the down jacket off, and they're in my clinic, which is cold, in a t-shirt, and I give them Huang Qi. I'm going to make them sweat so much because it's going to go in and it's going to nourish, build, and give them even more. And they already have excess. So Huang Qi, does it restrain or cause sweating? Well, it does neither. It affects the chi of a person. And if that person's chi is too strong, boom, they're going to break a bigger sweat and get real vexed and really unpleasant if you give them Huang Qi. And if they're really deficient, it's magic. All right. My favorite is Huang Qi. Does it aggravate or alleviate shingles? So, I mean, here we're in the pharmacy. I guess the cameras are aimed not that way. We've got all these great patents up here, right? And I guarantee you, if we were to grab the herpes zoster, the shingles patents, a bunch of them are going to have Huang Qi in them, right? So can we see the person that Huang Qi would help shingles? That's the elderly person who gets shingles. And if we don't build up their strength, 
Their chi isn't enough to get to the surface and those nerves are aggravated, but their chi isn't reaching the Lua network. It's not reaching the Wei Chi to flush and take away the, uh, the Du or the virus, the toxins, and therefore it just lingers there and it hurts and it itches. So the Huang Chi builds their own chi to get up to the surface and deal with what's there. But if it's that 40 year old or 50 year old overworking, they travel like for instance, if they were working in the clinic, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, flew to, saw patients, went to the airport, got to Germany, taught on Saturday, taught on Sunday, came back on Monday, got home at midnight, was in the clinic Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, flew to New York on Friday. <laughs> That's been my life, right? So if I get, if I'm not careful and I'm eating the crappy food, because what am I going to do? Starve, right? Uh, I eat organic home, but I mean, come on, I got to eat. Uh, all this going on and I'm not sleeping and I'm, yeah, I'm having to drink a lot of tea because, you know, there you go. If I take Huang Chi, my shingles is going to go brilliantly on fire. I'm going to have the nastiest shingles ever because I added gas to fire. So Huang Chi does not alleviate or aggravate shingles. It affects a human who has shingles. The right human, Huang Chi solves it. It's amazing. The elderly, you do all these things and you get people there. They're needling the two ends or they're giving them cold, bitter herbs to get rid of the shingles. You give them Huang Chi and it's gone. So you're like, oh, Huang Chi, it treats shingles. The next patient comes in, you give it and like, those, those things get huge. So see the world that way, not by what it says. Now, the ancients were not confused. The truth is, we are. So in the 80s and 90s in China, I was often told Chinese medicine was not scientific, but there was some empirical knowledge gained through time. That right? It's not scientific, but they got some tricks up their sleeves. You know, of course, thousands of years, they figured out some things, but pff, it's Bukhushia, right? They don't know bacteria. They don't know this. They don't know that. The longer I practice, the more I'm in awe of just how clear they were and how confused we are now, now being from Tang Dynasty forward, right? Uh, there's a big marker from when that Song Dynasty hit and onward of confusion uh, because we are thinking in diseases, patterns, and we're missing the most important thing. We don't treat diseases suffering from people. We treat people suffering from diseases. So if you find yourself treating diabetes, then you're treating diabetes who came with a person. And if you're lucky, the Huang Chi is going to work, all right? The Xiaoyao, the Shanyao is going to magically fix the diabetes. But if you're not because you missed the person, then hopefully your doses weren't very big to begin with. And so you didn't really do anything except let time go by. But, oh, Ah, Andrew, he uses big doses. Some of the people use big doses. In the mainland, these people have big doses. So you give them a really big dose of the wrong herb. And then you get to see what happens to someone's chi when that happens. So I remember way back when there was this, I got to meet a lot of these cantankerous old doctors who had the most dry, Beijing, cynical sense of humor, right? And they'd all suffered in the cultural revolution. Uh, and I was in one of the, I was in Dong Zhimen Yuan, actually. It doesn't matter. Uh, and they were asking this old doctor why the research doctors who knew so much weren't getting patients better. And he was. And he goes, Ta, Ta Kan Bing. Well, we'll counter it. Right? He, he treats illnesses. Me, I treat people. <laughs> Ooh. Ma ren, bu yong zang zer. Right? Insulting people without a dirty word in the sentence. <laughs> Love it. So let's look at another famous pathogen formula that we all know and use. We've got a cool, bitter, acrid. We've got a cold, bitter. Mm, that's interesting. Cool, bitter, acrid. So it's kind of like guajer, but the person's obviously moved to heat. So we wanted to get rid of the surface, relieve the surface, but they are obviously have heat. So we're using a cool herb but not cold acrid, it's a cool acrid. But we do have a cold bitter. 
So things have progressed. This person's been sick, not for a day, not for a few days. It's been sick long enough that we got to get in there and we got to take care of business because cold bitter kills. It's so important to remember that. Why does vitamin C and zinc work? Because they're cold bitter and they kill, but they kill the good and the bad. So we have to be careful. And a lot of cold bitter herbs really kill the good and the bad, which is why so many of those formulas have those bottom three herbs, warm acrid, warm neutral sweet, and warm sweet. <laughs> so we've got this cool bitter acrid to move the surface without aggravating it with heat. We've got a cold bitter because we got to get something. But something needs to be dislodged in a way that we need something toxic, right? But that toxic, because toxic is toxic. It's going to do something. It's cathartic. Every time you see the word toxic, replace it with the word cathartic. It's not going to be polite. It's going to cause something to happen quickly, which is what we want. So don't fear toxic. Just understand it. But it's not a hot toxic herb, right? It's not wuto. It's not like foods on steroids. It's not anything like that. It's a warm toxic and it's acrid. So the toxin's going to go in there and not cause the person to go into like cold shivers the way I did with the toad venom, but it's going to go in there and probably break apart things, make them sweat, make them have movement. Okay. And then we have a neutral sweet. Well, sweet nourishes. It slows, but this one, I'm going to guess neutral sweet. We got to give them, they've been sick for a while. So we got to give them some sweet to nourish and strengthen them up. And there's more sweet down there. So I can definitely see that we're nourishing, we're protecting, but they've been sick for some days. They need some nasty inside killer. They need some movement on the outside and they need some toxicity. So what are we treating? Who's this person? It's this person, All right? That's Chai Hu, Xiao Chai Hu Tang, All right? And Ban Xia is our toxic herb that's gonna go in there. Because if we don't keep going, this person may end up with pneumonia or may end up with crud in the lungs, that croup that doesn't get better at all, bronchiectasis. You have to add the extra S's in there, right? And that's, once it gets in there and that colony gets established, it's always tough. When I look at a brand new patient in the intake and it says bronchiectasis, right? Uh, and then they're in the waiting room. <laughs> And you hear that wet in there and you're like, please be the one in five that's going to get one form and be a miracle. The rest, it's a slog. That's when those colonies get established in there. Some of those candida colonies get established in there. It is so hard to eradicate. But what Xiao Chai Hu Tang really is by chi and flavor is cold, bitter, acrid, cold, bitter, killer, warm, toxic, acrid. We're going to just break apart things. And then nourish, protect, warm, and feed. That's Xiao Chai Hu Tang. Xiao Chai Hu Tang is not Chai Hu, Huang Qin, Ban Xia, Ren Shen, Sheng Jiang, Da Zhao, Zhe Gan Zhao. Uh, I have no idea whether I remembered years ago to post line 98 of the Shang Han Lun that I've been doing over the last group of years. How many years now? 10? Well, I haven't been doing it for 10 years. I've been working on it briefly over a period of 10 years. It's not a 10 year, never mind. Um, some of you have been in that room with me going to the Shang Han Lin way back when. So uh, if I haven't done it, somebody send me an email that reminds me to stick 98 Xiao Chai Hu Tang up on, I'll put it on our YouTube channel for free. Uh, if you ever were stuck in thinking that a classic formula should never be modified, this will free you of the whole thing because the modifications that happen to Xiao Chai Hu Tang in the Shang Han Lun based on symptomology or change in person is unbelievable. That there's no way to remain fixated on thinking you shouldn't touch or change a classical formula. So I'll stick that up there for free if I haven't already done so because I'm guessing that's just, never mind. We'll do that. So. Unmodified classic formulas in the real world. It's a problem because it means if we follow set formulas or set patterns or set thinking, we can write the right formula, but for the wrong constitution, making that person worse. That's Huang Chi for shingles in the 50-year-old 
and not the 80 year old. We might write the right formula, but affect or are affected by their medications and supplements. Aside, it will happen, I'm sure. But to date, I have yet to have a long COVID patient that didn't actually try and do something smart like zinc, vitamin C, some online something or other. And what they missed is they destroyed their good flora along with the bad because none of our herbs, cold, bitter, whether it's vitamin C or Huanglian, they don't know good and bad. They just kill, right? They're cold and they're bitter. So they damage their good flora to the point where when they got mildly better, they just keep being sick all the time because they don't have any immune system courtesy of their own efforts, all right? Uh, so maybe that's what's happened. Or you have the person who has terrible allergies, right? Good constitution and they're sick of it and they come and you've seen them in the past and you're like, you know what? I'm gonna use a little mahuang, right? Mahuang is a great herb to help this. You know, they're 60, 70 years old, pretty healthy. And maybe at some point in the past, you treated them for like a little enlarged prostate. But what you didn't know is that they're so sick of their allergies that they decided to take Zyrtec or Sudafed or something else like that. So you gave them herbs and then they're on like the double, triple dose of what they're taking. And the next thing you know, the water gets moved around, but can't leave. It just gets stuck in the body. The prostate swells, they can't pee, and they end up in the emergency room getting the roto rooter, which, um, yeah, just the visualization is all you need. And that's because it was the right formula, but their medications, what they chose to do, or their blood thinners, or whatever it may be, got in the way. We didn't modify based on that. Or... We might write the right formula for some symptoms, but worse in others. I don't need Baisha when I get sick. I don't at all. That's just slowing my healing process by tossing in a cold, sour herb. I don't need that. I can be better in a day if you give me either Dangui or Fang Fang, depending on which way I'm leaning, all right? Or we just simply write the wrong formula because we treated a disease name diabetes, high blood pressure. They get Shanja for their high blood pressure. Hawthorne, it's the new darling. Yeah, but a lot of those people who have high blood pressure are overweight and have PPIs. They're taking all sorts of Prilosec and everything else. And you're gonna put a sour, warm, burny type herb and not expect that to ferment in there and make their acid reflux so much worse. Wuweza makes acid reflux so much worse. So we were treating their disease name or their TCM pattern. Oh, they've got damp heat. They need this or they've got that. And Or no, my method is based on this. I do this. Or I'm only five element or I'm only this or I'm all there. Instead of the patient, which really means their chi and their blood in front of us, we have to treat the person in front of us and then modify the formula based on that. Now, I know that there's people out there and they don't modify the classic formulas and that's great and they get great results, but it's possible to take great and then just get greater, right? By actually writing a custom formula, which is, if again, it's on our teaching website. If you haven't ever heard it, please watch the preface to the Shang Han Lin. You skip the Shang Han Lin, just watch the preface and you'll realize that Zhang Zhongjing, he was reading every book possible he was scouring every formula. He wasn't following a set rule. He was desperate to get people better. And we need to return to that because he would be very sad if we just follow the herbs in his book because right? he tells you right in there, you're only gonna be able to solve about half the problems with the book he left, All right? So if we wanna do better, we gotta do what he does, which is keep reading, reading, reading. Formulas in the real world. Modify, modify, modify. In the real world, people come in many shapes, sizes, and types, right? Uh, overweight, underweight, vegan, vegetarian, paleo, uh, whatever they may be. We can't expect one formula to solve all problems when the people that we're sticking it into are all different shapes and sizes. 
And in the real world, people come in with common and strange conditions. And therefore, trying to pigeonhole all of their conditions into just a small group of formulas is going to mean we'll help some, but fail others. And no matter what, we're going to fail because there's always going to be people we don't get better. But why make it easier by not being flexible? But by being flexible and changing things, we can match these weird conditions and solve them because a standard formula from the classics may aggravate lots of things in their situation while helping them. Autoimmune is a great example of really important because the symptoms can come in all sorts of strange um, side effects. In the real world, people come simple and complicated, right? I'm sick, great. I'm sick and I have this and I have that and I was bit by a tick and I have Epstein-Barr and I have allergies and I'm gluten sensitive and <laughs> right? Uh, Enough said on that one. We all have those patients. Then we have people with different religious and socioeconomic backgrounds. I had a patient, the wife of a rabbi, uh, and high blood pressure, lots of anxiety, insomnia at night, big pulse, big lady. I mean, come on. Muli, Junju Mu, acid reflux, some Hai Piao Xiao, or some Wu Zhe Gu, right? Same herb. And she was like, wait, are they kosher? They're seafood. Oh, I got to respect that, right? What am I going to do? Oh, sorry, either take it or walk, right? No, I have to respect that. And they may have different socioeconomic backgrounds. I can't be writing these people expensive herbs, right? You watch the videos, you hear the story of my very first herb I ever tasted, Chu Tian Sao, grabbed out of that nasty coal heap, gross as all. Uh, the first time I ever really took a formula that was magic, is I had terrible skin, I was, never mind. I had a terrible skin rash because I was in deep rural China for a long period of time with no hygiene. And I, so bad, I was covered head to foot. I took a train into Beijing and I went to see my teacher, Professor Wang. And he looked at that and he was like, Tah! wrote me a formula. And he gave it to me, he said, right? this is gonna be like 20, 30 cents. He says, you go to Tongrentang, you go see a famous doctor, it's gonna be expensive and it's not gonna work. Take these herbs. You'll be better tomorrow. That's a bold statement, right? So go to the pharmacy, get that, take the train back to the countryside where I was at that time, grew up the herbs. Next morning I woke up and all the red mean had gone to pale and white chalky, right? Pu Gong Ying, Chu Chen Sao. He was like, cheap herbs work, remember that. So I want to really respect and never, no patient should ever be bankrupted because I believe this herb is the one they need because they don't need that herb, they need a flavor nature. Most important thing. And then in the real world, people come in for one thing, but currently are living with something else. And so this is a person, what I call the false healthy. The false healthy is such an important concept because when COVID for instance came through and everyone's like, oh, but like, I know someone who was like in their fifties and, and, and they died from COVID. You know, they go to the gym, they're exercise. So you see, it's like, ooh, false healthy. These are people who are on high blood pressure medication, diabetes medications, thyroid medications. These people look healthy. They go to the gym. They work. They laugh. They're, they have more energy than I do. You take away their medications. Days or weeks, they're a mess. So those medications create a false healthy person. It seems healthy until they're challenged by something nasty, right? So we want to be aware of what else they have. And then, of course, in the real world, people are often medicated, recreational or otherwise, and are seeing other modalities. So we finally have to come to a place where if a person comes in and they are concurrently seeing a functional medicine practitioner and they have the crazy supplement lists and they have to wake up at three in the morning to take the thing, we're like, great. If it's working, keep going. When it, if it doesn't work, you're not satisfied and you're done, come back and see us. I'll get you in but I'm not even going to mess with that, all right? Uh, it's just, <laughs> hubby, <laughs> why bother? I apologize. So what is the art of adding and subtracting, jajin from formulas? It's easy. First, stop seeing herbs by their name. 
but we see their chi and their flavor, their yin, their yang. Then we have to understand the slot machine. So the old style slot machines where it's like, you know, like seven, 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 right? It's Guizhou, Shaoyao, Shengjiang, Dazao, Gansao. I mean, it's like, you know, Guizhou is not enough. Think Ma Huang. Guizhou is too much. Baiju, right? I just choose a different slot in that slot that fits my patient by flavor nature. It's really easy. Once you see that and you see the herbs, then you can just be like, ding, 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 ding to a different herb that's in the roughly the same area of flavor nature. Then we need to understand adding and removing herbs by chi and flavor to then make a truly custom formula for our patient, right? Only when we can understand flavor nature, understand how to switch them, do we make that custom formula that makes our patients dramatically better week to week, right? And not month to month and then you know, six months later, they're like, oh, yeah, I'm better. But, uh, you know, I don't know. I also joined a gym, changed my diet. Like, was it you? Were you just holding their hand? Did you give them the motivation to make the life change? In which case, what did Chinese medicine have to do with any of this? Right? I don't like that. I want to know. I want to make them better or I want to make them worse. I don't want to make them worse, but at least I know I did something. So um, that flavor nature is really important so that I really get everything going the direction I believe to be the right direction. And then I see the results. Was I right or wrong? But at least it's clear. And then the truth is, we've got to make friends with herbs and get to know their personalities of heavy, light, thick, and thin, yin and yang, dominant chi or dominant flavor. And the more we make friends with herbs, the better our choices will be. And that means tasting herbs. There's no way around it. We don't have to. But we will find that there is a glass ceiling to what we can do if we're only prescribing flavor nature by what a book says. Because when you see an herb that says sweet, bitter, acrid, astringent, like, well, which one is it? All of them? No, it depends which batch you got, right? It changes all the time. And then you say, well, then I'll never be able to prescribe if I don't taste every herb. You do the best you can. But get herbs, cook them, drink them, taste them. In our pharmacy, we have two instant pots going almost every day. And every morning, there's two different herbs, two different lot numbers have come in, or we've forgotten about something. Uh, Julianne has wonderful videos that are also free on the teachable thing of single herb tasting, where she's running through these herbs and being like, oh, this is what the old book said. Here, where this is the lines. Here's the flavor I'm getting. Oh, I can see that. Um, so important to just make the effort. And it's not hard, right? You buy 20 herbs, you get like a three quart or a two quart instant pot or something like that. And you stick it in at night and you hit the 12 hour slow cook button. And in the morning you take it and you have a cup and you're like, mm, that's this, mm, that's that. Oh, I've been writing that to my patients. That's my favorite. You're just like, oh, that's awful. Or meh, or <laughs> right? Huang Chi, no more than three days, All right? So important. So here, like I did with Guajer, these are all common variations of Xiao Chai Hu Tang that I personally use frequently, All right? So you've got your first line, you've got Chai Hu Huang Chi Ban Xia Dang Shen. You've got the formula that everybody knows. But what happens if it's light and they're, they're feverish and they got little mouth blisters, they're sweating, they're sick, but it's like that hot, it's almost like a one bing, right? It's almost a, that. Then what am I doing with Chai Hu Huang Qing? They're too strong, bitter, heavy. I need lighter herbs. I need Bo He that's cooling. And I need Jin Yin Hua to go in there light and go in there. Their lungs don't need Ban Xia, right? It's croupy in there. I'm going to give them some Gualo to moisten it so that the phlegm can leave, right? Make it moister. Mo yeah, moister is the word I'm looking for so that it's slippery and the phlegm can go. Wrong moistening herbs, and you added more damp in there, and it gets even worse and clogged in there, right? So you just got to know those herbs a little bit. And then you've got your dang shen sheng jian da zao. Shi gao zhi mu, right? Bai hu tang, right there. You're looking at bai hu tang, but they got lots of other garbage going on. They've been sick. So bai hu tang by itself isn't going to do it. The lungs are starting to get some stuff. So some zisu gung. Uh, zisu gung, if you aren't familiar with it, is awesome. 
it's the stem of Zisu Ye and Zisu Zi, right? So the gung is just even more warming and strong and lasts longer than Zisu Ye. So Zisu Ye tends to run out in the stomach. And by the time you've digested it, it doesn't really heat up the whole chest the way Zisu Gung does. And Zisu Zi, the seeds, last longer into your intestines and therefore make changes, right? So you start recognizing that the leaf runs out sooner than the stem. The stem runs out sooner than the seed, right? Um, so we've got Zisu Gung and Bei Sha Shen instead of Dang Shen, right? And then instead of Sheng Jiang, we've got Chen Pi because their nausea does not need a warm herb, right? They've got nausea, but we've got Shigao Jirmu driving in there. What are we doing with Sheng Jiang for their nausea in their middle? We want some Chen Pi, some Qing Pi instead of Da Zhao. Let's move things. And some Sheng Gan Sao. Look down there, you'll see I frequently take Sheng Jiang Sao instead of Zhe Gan Sao. I don't want the sticky. Particularly these days, it's almost like a lot of times the, the jirgansal comes as they took a bunch of gansal and then they just threw a bunch of sticky honey molasses stuff on it and did it. It wasn't slow cooked in. So like you take it and then you scrape off the layer and you're kind of looking at shung gansal with sticky stuff on top, right? At that point, you know, I don't know what I'm giving them. I'll give them shung gansal. And then the last one, chai hu jirzi instead of huang qin. Uh, I use a lot of jirzi. Bai Chen and Chen Hu. If you don't know those two herbs, they are great. Bai Chen is warm and aromatic into the chest. Chen Hu is cool, neutral, and more killer in the chest. Nan Shashan, especially more for phlegm. I don't care, to be honest. Bai Shashan, Nan Shashan. I'm looking for a root that's not going to be too wet. And then Sheng Jiang, Da Zhao, Zhe Gan Zhao. So in, you'll see that in um, that formula, this made my attention and this whole slide came about because years ago we had some people who've been training with us for years they started in 2012 uh, in london and at the end of their observation in our clinic uh the person said what i was most we, we, we used to ask a question what was your biggest surprise about your observation at our clinic you know you don't use moxa you do this you do that your patients scream a lot whatever it may be right so a person says, well, I really thought you'd use more classic formulas. And it's like, I like to joke. It's like the cockers being like, oh. like, like, hmm, huh. And I was like, these are all classic formulas. No, like had them all memorized, knew them all. And then it was at that moment that I realized that people were seeing herb names, not flavor nature and not switching. And it was Bohe, Jinhua, Gualo, Dangshan. And I was like, what are you talking about? That's Xiao Chai Hutong. And they were like, Andrew, that's not Xiao Chai like thank you <laughs> no i'm just poking fun because we're good friends um but that idea of when i look at a formula now i'll run through and i can see the the formula that inspired the changes of what's happening by flavor nature how are we doing on time what time is it? i don't have a clock here okay we're good we have a few more minutes so here's another one I'm going to move a little faster, but uh, treating autoimmune consumptive diseases. I spent two years uh, in a clinic with an autoimmune specialist. Um, if you ever catch me in an airport lounge, I don't actually don't drink when I travel because that, never mind. I do not touch any alcohol or caffeine when I fly. Uh, but if you got me on the other end of that and you managed to load a couple of cocktails into me, uh, I'll tell you about that autoimmune specialist. But the nice thing is that uh, the formula of choice was the famous formula Bie Jia Qing Hao Tang, right? And so it's Bie Jia Qing Hao Sheng Di Huang Zhi Mu Mu Dan Pi. Uh, I personally don't use any Bie Jia or other pangolin scales or anything else. A lot of humans, not a lot of them. So if we're going to lose one, let's lose a human, keep the animal, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just, come on, there's a lot of us. So the object is, what am I going to replace that? But when you do flavor nature and you think of a consumptive illness that is causing an angry response in the body, biejia or something that deeply nourishes yin, qinghao. I love qinghao. Qinghao, make friends with qinghao. Great herb. Uh, I hate shengdi. Now we can get shengdi that's not blackened. It's the yellow shengdi. Um, but... If you watch Julianne's videos and you read actually the old books, what we're getting now is Gandhi or Jir Dihuang, right? 
but sheng gan a uh, sheng di huang was sheng it was pulled out of the ground and you were juicing it right so if you squeeze that huang di and didn't get any juice and the formula called for sheng di huang you didn't prescribe them sheng di huang even though the bag said that just so you know that's important to know so i don't like sheng di um but i love xuan shen so my go-to instead of bie jia i'll use mai mandong and tian mandong right and then I love Ching Hao. I use Ching Hao in big doses. My patients call it swamp water. Um, I love Xuan Shen. And then Jermu Mudanpi. But if you have a consumptive disease, autoimmune condition, fibromyalgia, but it's cold, you need Guajir. You don't, you need to warm acrid movement so that that Ching Hao can move through the body instead of a nourish the yin. And if that guajir is not strong enough, you got to use mahua to push those herbs, the ching hao, through the system. Uh, it's actually, it was for Camwell. I did a bunch of practical herbalist articles about mahua and a, a couple of other herbs. I think it was four or five herbs before COVID happened and we all got distracted. Um, so if you search the Camwell archives, I wrote some great blogs on some of these herbs and what mahua really does, which is not what most people think. Um, but understanding how to put in a warm acrid or a big mover uh, and a maimandong versus a shjermu or a shuenshan versus a di huang out of habit, preference, safety of the poor animals and the patient you have, then you can get really successful at working on autoimmune conditions by just starting with bie jia ching hao sheng di jermu mu dan pi, writing those flavor natures and then doing everything I said and tweaking it and then adding a few extra herbs either side of it. Uh, and you will watch your lupus patients, your rheumatoid arthritis patients. The two hardest things are vitiligo. That's a tough one, right? Uh, and Crohn's. Crohn's is either 100% or zero oftentimes. Um, but most of the other autoimmunes are, it's almost embarrassing how successful we can be. Uh, if you just understand this slide right in front of you and then modify accordingly. So famous Sunni, right? Here's the famous Sunni San and Tang and variation formulas. These are all classic. This is not Andrew. So Chai Hu Jirshu, Bai Shao, Jir Gan Sao, you've got Sunni San. Uh, and you can see cold acrid, cold bitter, cool sour, and then some Gan Sao in there. To flip that with Sunni Tang, where it's, hot acrid, hot acrid, and jirgansau, foods of ganjiao. And then you look at the next one and you can say like, oh, right? They got to make the blood warm and the blood's got to reach the hands. It's not as simple as warming the yang to return or cooling the system, right? So that fuzi is pushing the dangwe around and the fang fang is protecting the surface so that it doesn't just come out in the sweat. And look at that Fang Ji at the bottom. Like I said, these are not Andrew formulas. These are all famous Sinni formulas, right? Oh, we're creating a drain. So urination, a plug out. And then we look at that last one. I look at that. We went from three herbs of Fuzi, Ganjiang, Jirgansau to Dangwei, Guajir, Xixin. Don't be scared of Xixin. It's a great herb. Bai Shao. And then look at that. Another drain or create movement out the bottom or mutong and then some dazao and some jirgansao in there you've got the first one which is cold 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 cool second one hot 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 warm third one oh chi and blood everything is warm hot except for the fangji and then that fourth one is warm acrid bitter sweet warm acrid hot acrid Oh, we got to do some protecting, some bai shao, some da zao, some jirgan sao. And we have to create a little pressure downward or a little movement just to release something. Mutong, fangji, brilliant modifications of a concept, sini. And then we want to look at these four and see the person. Well, who is this person? How old are they? How underweight or overweight are they? How well nourished or poorly nourished are they? And then how do I change it according to my person? So the matrix of being a successful practitioner. Think clearly on what the classics are teaching, not 
what they say. Do not read and regurgitate. Learn from them. You should study me, but you should not mimic me or try to be me. See the patient clearly in terms of upright leading to pernicious, pernicious affecting the upright, who they are constitutionally, and where and why they are where they are right now in front of you when you write that formula. They're a way of using herbs. There is no other, referring to flavor nature, chi and flavor. It's not true, right? You can use herbs many ways. It's just our efficacy goes down. And this is kind of what happens when you get really good at this is that you get going and you get a lot of people better and they tell everyone. And just when you're thinking you got this, the people who have really crazy conditions start seeing you, all right? And you're like, oh, and you're just, your percentage of success just drops again, right? And you're like, okay, that sucked. And then you figure those things out and you put together the pieces and you get smarter and then it gets better again. And then the next group comes in, right? And it just keeps smacking you down. So you can use herbs many ways, but this is the way that gives you the flexibility to not just be stuck using herbs that you know treat headaches or this or there and actually getting in to the person. So what is my opinion on classic formulas? You should study me, but you should not mimic me. All right. Uh, to hammer in the point, instead of thinking of all the formulas as this unique power structures because they're classic, list all the formulas that have Guajar in them. And then start seeing them in the slot machine. Oh, they switch this out. They switch that out. I mean, everybody learns Ma Huang Tang, right? Ma Huang Tang, Ma Huang Guizhou, like Ma Huang, Ma Huang, Ma Huang. Actually, Ma Huang is paired with Shu Gao, right? It loves Shu Gao. Shu Gao loves Ma Huang. Patients get dramatically better with a lot of Shu Gao because those are classic formulas as well. They just slid that thing. Whoa, they do not need warm, acrid, and sweating. They actually need uh, Shugao and e, e Red, right? So we got to cool them and we got to get them to pee out the water, right? Um, so when we start seeing it that way, you start realizing that all these classic formulas are really just variations of just a few formulas as opposed to each one being its own person, right? They're not. So a practical herbalist, not a classical herbalist, a practical herbalist, has only one mission. Don't be confused. Don't be seduced by styles, pedagogy, lineage, or dogma. Because the practical herbalist has only one mission. It's to get our patients better any manner we can, as long as it does not actually cause more damage to them in the shorter long term, the way Western medicines do, or have consequences which they might not have accepted if they knew beforehand. If they knew what was going to happen to them, all the steroid usage, and then 20 years later, their bones are so brittle that they can break it sitting down. I saw patient after patient like that in that autoimmune specialty clinic in China for two years because steroids was the way to go. And in China, they're not kidding. They're going to use real dosages, right? And then you see what happens to these people. Would they go back in time and say, no, thank you. Chemotherapy, pretty classic thing. I'll never do that again, is what my patients often say. Why work hard to become a practical herbalist? Necessity. Our breadth of practice includes so many different conditions and patient types. We cannot hope to memorize enough specific remedies for everything that walks in the door. So the flowchart method begins to fail when our patient base goes unbelievably wide. I mean, I remember the first time that yeah, I'm memorizing all my classic formulas and I'm, 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 I'm of the classic school way back when I was 20, right? I'm like, ha ha, right? And then uh, the neighbor came in and it was like, ah, I have this dog bite. I'm really scared. I have rabies. I'm looking at it and I'm like, huh, <laughs> that wasn't in there. Dog bite for rabies. That's not in, look, no, I did not click the Sean Hunter. I know it's not in there, right? <laughs> So we just, we can't have like this memorized thing of this for this for this, if our patient base is wide. If we start specializing, you can get away with it, but it's not fun. 
Second reason is we're driven to. We don't want to be limited to cookbook medicine following set recipes. We want to make a difference for every patient who comes to see us. It's so boring to practice cookbook medicine. It may be financially successful. It may be great. But I will tell you, in the early years of my teaching, so puts us in the late 90s, early 2000s, uh, later on, I guess, the best students I had were the ones who'd been in practice for a bunch of years, gotten successful, and then realized that they weren't quite sure what they were doing was actually making the most difference, that they were bored and they were smart. And they were like, there has to be more to this than what we're doing. Um, and that's what drives us because we want to know. And then, as Dr. Lee said, we do not ignore the experience of the past, even if it's not classical or it's even folk grandma medicine, because we have one mission, which is to get our patients better. We want to study the theory of the classic books. We want to learn from the classic books. We want to respect the experience contained within formulas through the times. The ones that just work, right? There's no theory involved. It just works. Or the theory is kind of like, yeah, sometimes not. But the formula, darn, if it doesn't work. With our last remaining little bit, I just want us to look at these two formulas now that we have our flavor, nature, and our herbs. Formula number one is dangwe, ruxiang, moyao. We all jump up and say, ooh, injury, trauma, right? That's a trauma formula if I've ever seen one. Mugwa, oh, uh, okay. Oh, hongwa, we're back in trauma. Dear, maybe that is. Jerma, that's random. <laughs> ah. ah, they have an injury and it's been around a while. We need to nourish their liver yin, their kidney yin, whatever's going on. But how would I use this? This, that looks pretty good for arthritis where it's cold or an old injury that's been sore for a long time. I could use this for the person who wakes up stiff and hurts in the morning. And then as the day goes on, they loosen up and they feel great because I've got dangwe, which is warm, and ruxiang, which is warm. I got some warm sour. I got some warm acrid. And then I've got a cool bitter sour. But look at that. That's going to really help movement of blood in the body. All right. Formula number two, shuxiang. Uh, so these days it's all synthetic, uh, but musk, and that's warm, hot, aromatic, acrid, and niu huang, whoa, that's the big hitter. Again, it's all synthetic now, so don't bother. Um, cool bitter. So whatever's going on, they've passed out and they're feverish or febrile. Niu huang is the famous ingredient, angong niu huang for a stroke, right? So wow, okay. Zhen zhu mu, ooh, okay. We're calming that liver yang. Something's going on. We got cold Neo Huang in there. We got some Junju Mu. Whoa, huh. That's random. Lu Gansher. If you're unfamiliar with that, that's calamine. All right. The Chinese use calamine lotion too. All right. Peng Sha. Bing Pian. Oh, Bing Pian. Oh, we're back at the, okay. The Bing Pian is cooling and the Neo Huang and the Junju Mu were settling. Hu Po, another one. Ah. Huh. All right. Something bad's happened to this person. And we've got emergency medicine in there. And like some soothing in there. Okay. So I could use that for any of those kind of deep, passed out, toxic, high fevers, convulsions, uh, tremors, uh, the, you know, like the infant with 104 fever. That would work. Okay. All right. Now, what if we made those two formulas into topicals? Okay. Well, the germa gets useful. We could grind that up into an oil, use that as our carrier, right? So now that would be a great trauma for old lingering injuries. Dangwe, Ruxiang, Moya, Mugua, Honghua, Di. Come on, that's going to take the heck out of swelling and pain that is cold in nature. Maybe it feels hot at the spot, but they are weak. So you need to actually warm to get rid of heat as opposed to cool to get rid of heat. So that gets useful. I could totally see that in an alcohol soak or a sesame oil mix to rub on the body. And then the other one, topical, shuxiang, niu huang. Ooh, okay. That's lugansher, calamine, pengsha, borax, bingpian. 
skin, right? I could use that for skin maybe, right? Or I could use that for mm, smelling salts, like something that go in and really get in there or enliven. Maybe I could stick it on the teeth if they've got like bleeding gums, hot mouth, that kind of thing. Okay. But these two formulations, where do I find them? You're looking at Jing Wan Hong, formula number one, the most famous burn cream on the shelf here somewhere, right there, right? In multiple sizes and things like that. And number two, that is China's most famous hemorrhoid cream. Yeah, we all. I know, it's been sold out everywhere for a while. Nobody's got it. I was hoping that like, you'd be like, oh yeah, we just got a shit and I'm gonna go home in a suitcase. I'm like, nope. Oh, well, I didn't need to put this slide in. That was a whole workup to like get them to sell me something. <laughs> so now if you're not careful, you're gonna be like, wait a minute. Oh, I'll only use that for burns or I'm gonna use that for hemorrhoids. No, everything we just said, my patients are sticking hemorrhoid cream on everything. That's not hemorrhoids. Okay, what, what do you mean? But it's for hemorrhoids. No, it's not for hemorrhoids. It's got shushiang, niuhuang, peng sha, bing pian. It's going to heal an open sore or wound. It's going to cool anything that's mean. You can stick it on a herpes blister, right? Just because the box says hemorrhoids, you don't want to be like, oh, well, that's kind of gross. Like it did not go to someone's hemorrhoid and then into your tube. <laughs> that's not what happens, right? Jing Wan Hong. I have so many patients who use Jing Wan Hong for any bug bites, anything that goes on, bee stings, Jing Wan Hong goes on. Burns, of course, but sunburn, Jing Wan Hong, right? Look at the herbs. It's going to move the blood, calm, soothe, make things happen, and then the sesame, right? The other one, it's going to get rid of the nasty. So important. When we understand that, don't look at the name of what the tube says. Oh, treats cough. Oh, Balfa one does this. Look at the ingredients, write down the flavor of nature and then see, how am I gonna use this off label? And suddenly you can do a whole lot with just a few things. So to finish up, where to go from here? If you're having fun out there, here, come join me. Um, this year I'm teaching a practical herbalist course and I don't expect to be teaching it for years again. Uh, two modules, May 4, 5, September 14, 15 in Asheville. If you can't make that, you should sign up for the Classical Herbalist online course of Julianne's. It's great. Uh, maybe one day there'll be a Practical Herbalist online course, but given how busy I am, I do not see myself editing that. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I've been waiting for some videos for a very long time. So you should come in person. Uh, do you need more understanding on implementing classical theory and diagnosis? Classical Theory in Clinical Practice online course. It really just makes you understand what they were thinking, how they saw illness, everything she in blood, et cetera. It clarifies everything so you can do whatever you want. You want to see what it looks like treating patients? Come observe. We have a teaching clinic. You can come watch us, right? See our mistakes, see our successes, see us using these formulas. Tell me I'm not writing classical formulas. <laughs> sorry again i'm having fun um all righty so with whatever little time we have left um what time is it 7 56 so one question <laughs> uh but really um if you have a question go to our youtube channel watch all the snippets there's so much free information um Redo all the formulas, writing their flavor, nature, or their chi, because it's chi way in Chinese, chi and flavor, not nature, flavor, nature, right? Um, and then just play. Uh, there's nothing more important than given how much work this all is going to be and how much suffering we really are going to be dealing with if we up our patient base into that level of illness, you got to be playful and you got to have fun gotta have fun it's so important um because then you wake up every day and it's just it's a, a great day um all right so thank you all for coming and camel as always thank you appreciate it good night everybody online